Hey, happy Monday, everyone. Josh is severe weather. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I know I did. And uh, we are going to get to what is looking like maybe a not so great holiday weekend here on the East Coast with potential trouble coming down the pipe here as we get into an unsettled pattern, some tropical moisture in place. Uh, those of you that are looking to maybe head to the beach for an extended period uh, as we get to the end of this week and especially over the holiday weekend may not like what I'm about to share with you, but I think it's important. So I'm, of course, going to share that with you. Here is the screen and here's what we're looking at. Um, time to start looking at tropics and whether or not we have something tropical forming. We do have a storm threat over the weekend. And either way you look at it, it's going to bring wet weather up the East Coast, especially across the mid-Atlantic coast here this weekend, but perhaps even farther north up into the Northeast as we get towards Memorial Day and beyond. Um, we have already taken a look at a, a potential um, disturbance out here east of the Bahamas, and I'm going to show you kind of another view of that. But we also have a trough moving through the eastern United States. And you can see the good news for all of these storms is that they are going to get pushed offshore. Now, as we get later into this week, we are going to see another disturbance move into the southeast. It's right now across the central part of the country, and it's going to get trapped. It's kind of going to get cut off from the main flow here as uh, we have another big trough that's going to rise up and over the U.S. So the jet stream actually goes up into Canada. That's not going to pick up this storm and move it quickly east, which is good uh, for those that, that want to avoid severe weather. However, it's bad for those that want to avoid rain and tropical moisture all that's going to be in place here and here's a look at the Atlantic Basin and you can see we do have a disturbance spinning across the far eastern parts of the Bahamas bringing a lot of rain into Puerto Rico and through the Mona Passage into eastern parts of, of the Dominican Republic now this is getting a lot of wind shear and dry air to the west of it and likely going to continue so this will probably not develop into anything tropical uh, but nonetheless if you're vacationing here in the Mona Passage or in the Turks and Caicos or eventually Bermuda, this storm system is going to kind of still be in our hair for the next few days. And so the National Hurricane Center does has, have a 10% area drawn out here just to the east of the Bahamas. And I think this maybe ha has been updated since. Uh, not quite yet. Oh, yep, here it is, 8 o'clock. And still no chance for any real big development, a 10% chance. Um, but due to the fact that we have strong upper level winds and dry air in place to the west, that is going to prevent any kind of development of this system as it tracks north northeastward. The good news for it is it is heading away from the east coast of the United States. Um, the bad news if you're in Bermuda is that it's heading more in your direction. Here's a look from Radar Omega at all the moisture from this low pressure system. And you can see that rain getting pulled northward here into Bermuda overnight tonight and into the day tomorrow. It will get pulled away from Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic as we get on into Wednesday. But the next uh, day and a half or so look very wet here in the Bermuda area. And uh, also looks unsettled across parts of Florida where we do have a marginal risk for severe weather. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that here in the second part of the video. But right now, just wanted to show you all kind of what the models are showing with uh, kind of a disorganized system, but a big slug of moisture getting pulled all the way up into the North Atlantic, eventually into eastern parts of Canada. Now, uh, when it looks like uh, for tropical development, we're still very early in the game here. We do have some heat content over the Caribbean, but as we get into the western Atlantic and off the east coast of Florida, the potential heat in place for any kind of major development is not there yet. It usually isn't there until we get into July and especially August and September. So anything that does try to form in here is going to struggle. So that's the good news. The bad news, though, is that we've got a very stagnant weather pattern here where we've got low pressure likely to stick around off the east coast. And this is next Friday night into Saturday. The GFS shows low pressure forming, and it's going to get drawn northward here by this upper level low that's going to spin across the Tennessee Valley. This is next Saturday, and it looks like it's going to be a wet one here in the Carolinas. And that low pressure system could continue slowly northward into the mid-Atlantic region on Sunday. But unfortunately, the upper level low behind it's not really moving. So while surface low moves in here, we continue to see unsettled flow here right into Memorial Day. Not everybody's going to get wet the entire weekend, but if low pressure does form, which it looks like it probably will, then the uh, outer banks are going to be in for really nasty weather on Saturday, maybe into Sunday morning here, and then eventually up into southern New England, uh, we have some moisture in place here. And beyond this, it continues to stay unsettled. This is Memorial Day, and we have another wave of rain coming up through the central Appalachians, through the Carolinas, 
maybe even up into the eastern Great Lakes region here on Memorial Day. So this stays wet even into next week. So this is just one model run of the GFS, but it's been kind of consistent in showing this low pressure forming. I'll show you some other models, though. Here's the European, and uh, we can see low pressure also likely to form at some point here Thursday night or Friday um, off of the southeast coast. This is next Friday after or this Friday afternoon, the 26th. And if you're headed to the beaches, it looks like it's already raining here on Friday morning. Um, it only gets wetter as we get into Friday night and Saturday morning over the outer banks and over the beaches basically from Myrtle Beach on northward up to Virginia Beach. This rain will also move inland back to the I-95 corridor and maybe even all the way back to Florence and Raleigh and Fayetteville here on Friday night into Saturday. So we're likely getting a wet start to the weekend. Um, not a big wind maker at this point, not a big wave maker, but a rain maker, any, if anything else. So while it could be something tropical, if it sits around long enough, I don't think it's going to matter, even if it's subtropical, no matter what. Uh, we are dealing with the same impacts that's some gusty winds of the outer banks and beaches it's it's heavy cool rain over portions of the uh, coastline here and we just got a lot of rain here last friday in the wilmington area uh, unfortunately this model indicates that next friday into saturday is going to be wet once again here um, and this is right on through saturday the european doesn't go beyond that at least i don't have it beyond that um, but you can see a, a very slow moving system here spinning off the coastline in north carolina over the weekend and I'll show you the Canadian model as well, since it goes out that far here. We see pretty quiet weather the next couple of days, um, except maybe over parts of Florida. Then our upper low moves down, and we can see low pressure trying to form here off the coast. The Canadian is a little bit slower than the GFS and European, and it actually holds off until Saturday afternoon and Saturday night here over the Outer Banks and into the day on Sunday. It actually has kind of a more um, pronounced circulation here because it is slower, and it is allowing... Um, rain and thunderstorms to form uh, over the warmer waters of the Gulf Stream. So this is Sunday afternoon and Sunday night here over the Outer Banks. Uh, I am leaning maybe more towards the other models in the Canadian, but this is certainly on the table here. We've got everything kind of moving slowly, um, but this is Memorial Day morning and we continue to deal with wet weather over the Mid-Atlantic. There is good news if you're in the Northeast, this Canadian solution looks better for your holiday weekend, but this is an outlier. All the other models uh, have it uh, coming in farther to the north and west and moving more quickly. So the northeast would be good if the Canadian is right. However, um, the European starts bringing this moisture northward and the uh, GFS uh, draws it all the way up into New York City, Long Island, uh, the beaches of New Jersey here later in this weekend, Saturday night into Sunday and possibly into Monday as well. So that's what we're keeping an eye on at this point. Um, it's going to be very wet, though. Florida and especially the coastal waters here off the southeast coast here over the next five days, uh, we have the potential to see um, near the coast two to four inches of rain, but offshore, potentially a foot of rain or more here uh, as this low pressure gets going. And some of that moisture crawls up the coast into the outer banks here on Friday and Saturday. So while this stops here Saturday morning, um, we're likely to see kind of this rain area pivoting northwestward here where we could see several inches of rain up the coast. So that's something to stay tuned on. Now, the Great Lakes are looking dry. The Northeast, other than a front moving down here the next couple of days, we'll see pretty quiet weather um, while most of the action is going to be over the interior of the Northwest and again in the Southern and Central Plains over the next couple of days. Here's the total rainfall in the East where most of our problems are going to be over the next week or so and really into next Tuesday. And we can see amounts could be as much as two feet if this model is correct, off the east coast of Florida, maybe four to six inches on the northeast coast of Florida, the first coast could see a lot of rain. Uh, where this comes in, we could see a lot of rain as well, but right now the models do not show it uh, getting all the way up into the mid-Atlantic region. There'll be some rain, but the heaviest rain is more from our circulation moisture getting drawn in from the upper low. So you can kind of see the framework for where this heavy rain is going to be over the triad and over uh, Raleigh-Durham and up to about Lynchburg and Roanoke potentially one to three inches of rain here. And most of that's gonna fall later Friday into Saturday. And then possibly we see some slightly quieter weather Sunday into Monday. Temperatures get held down as well. So we are not looking at any kind of heat anytime soon here in the Southeast. This is a pretty wet pattern for us and a pretty cloudy weather pattern as well. Um, here's a look at where the chance for tropical cyclone formation is expected and you can see why they do have a 10 percent chance there is somewhat lower wind shear here to the north of the mona passage 
and to the north of Puerto Rico, but you can see wind shear already picks up to the west of it uh, with westerly wind shear. So as this upper level low moves northward, as the surface low moves north, it moves into an area where the wind shear picks up, where we have drier air to the west, and both of those inhibit, inhibit any kind of development. And then with our next storm system, we still have some wind shear to talk about here. And you can see this is the uh, flow aloft, um, or actually the mid-levels here, it's out of the south, but then right here, it's out of the north, so there's kind of a lull between the two here. What we really want to see is light wind flow, an upper level low forming, uh, or an upper level high forming, like you see here in the Great Lakes. But when you've got this kind of diffluent flow where it chops up, where the disturbance has southerly flow aloft, but west of it, you have a dry northerly flow, those typically spell doom for any kind of tropical development. Here's a look at the aloft picture, and you can see the wind shear picking up. Yes, it's light right here. That's why we have uh, storms getting going here, but what we really want to see is an upper level high building in on top of it. Unfortunately, for the life of this cyclone, we have increasing winds aloft from the west. So wind shear is going to be a problem here through the next several days. It'll also be um, problematic for any kind of tropical development off the northeast or off of the uh, southeast coast until we get to the weekend. And then it may relax enough to see some form of tropical development. So I do have this uh, pictured here, but I don't want you guys to get caught up in that so much. Um, the likelihood that we have a name storm here is, is definitely less than 50%, probably more like 10%, um, but the system will be there regardless. So we do have the threat for seeing that rain moving inland. So again, we're not going to stress about whether or not it gets a name. If it happens, it happens. Uh, we're more concerned with the effects of the rain that you're going to have on your holiday weekend. Now let's look beyond. Um, I am not going to lie to you guys. I thought this May would be pretty active for tornadoes. It has not been. My forecast has not turned out to go very well. Uh, always a challenge when you do a longer range forecast or a, lo a longer range forecast to see that happen. And you know, I'll, I'll definitely uh, certainly take the blame for that. I mean, nobody's perfect, and I don't expect to be. But um, the reason why is we've had such a large region of high pressure in here, and that's kind of pinched off any kind of storm track. Um, and also, you know, we're moving faster into an El Nino than what some models were showing. So the transition has been quicker. And so while it was an active winter and early spring, things have been a lot quieter for the second half of spring. And honestly, I'm perfectly fine with that. I mean, I don't want to see people losing their homes and lives. So uh, the fact that we're having a quieter than average May, I am perfectly fine with here. Um, as we, uh, I don't know why this is not loaded for me, but let's try it one more time. Uh, as we look at the upper level pattern, you'll see kind of two dominant features. One is this big trough here moving into the northeast. That is uh, going to swing through here pretty quickly and allow a, re a region of high pressure to build in behind it. Uh, we do see, though, an upper level, a upper, good grief, I can't talk today, an upper level low moving down the California coast. And so some faster southwesterly flow aloft here later this week will start to bring some more active weather into the southwest and especially into the plains. And you can see, um, at the same time, we have our upper lows spinning over the southeast. This is going to really prevent these storms from moving too far east into the Mississippi Valley. Really, they're going to have to go up and over this into Montana, up into central Canada. So the uh, those that are storm chasers certainly don't like to see this, but we do see some shuffling coming next week where this upper level low moves out and we have some faster wind flow out of the southwest. And I think next week could end up starting a more active pattern here as we get into June over parts of the plains here but it's going to take some time for that to happen here um right now uh, we are just looking at a uh, slight risk for severe weather over the northern part of texas and southwestern oklahoma that's the case again tomorrow and day three a marginal risk so not a very big area of severe weather expected uh, relatively quiet weather continues um, we'll see maybe severe weather across montana and idaho here today uh, but really not a very active severe weather uh, risk here. And as you look at the GFS on the surface map here from pivotalweather.com, you can see here are the storms moving southeastward across Colorado into West Texas over the next few days, and they continue on a daily uh, path here. So we will see a, potentially some big hail, strong winds, and maybe a few tornadoes in here right through the end of the week. But overall, a less active uh, storm track than you would expect this time of the year over the plains. Now, the southeast gets busy here with chilly rain. I say chilly, it'll be in the 60s, but cooler than what we're used to this time of the year. And that surface low on the GFS moves up into eastern North Carolina here over the weekend and then starts to fade, but that moisture sticks around here into Pennsylvania in the northeast here on Memorial Day. Upper low moves east, so we could see a few heavier storms here and some heavy rain over the central Appalachians, maybe some flash flooding over portions of West Virginia and western Virginia. So keep an eye on that on Memorial Day. 
And that low um, may spawn some more low pressure systems, one moving into New England here next week. And then we continue to see an active pattern in the east. So, you know, we're going to see things moving in slow motion here where the eastern U.S. gets several days of dry weather, then several days of crappy weather, and then maybe a break and then more crappy weather. Um, but the one thing I'm going to guarantee is it's not going to get hot anytime soon here in the southeast or the mid-Atlantic region. A quick look here at the uh, southern plains. You'll see where the active weather is going to be here today over west Texas. And then we get a break as things move southeastward, and then more storms will fire up uh, farther west tomorrow afternoon. This is about 6 o'clock here, Texas time. And these storms move east into Oklahoma tomorrow night and maybe getting close to Fort Worth and Abilene, but falling apart at that point. And then we kind of redo things here on Wednesday as well. The southeast, nothing really widespread as far as severe goes, but we do have maybe a few heavier storms this afternoon moving through the northern and central parts of the Florida Peninsula. Mainly the west coast sees the focus of the storms here today, although interior areas more likely than beach areas. As we get into the evening hour, storms fade, and then we see additional rain and storms tomorrow afternoon. And this time we're favoring more of uh, the eastern peninsula of Florida, Orlando, and maybe up to Jacksonville, and then more storms expected Wednesday. It's going to be kind of a daily routine here for Florida. Uh, finally, in the northeast, pretty quiet weather today. Maybe a few scattered showers popping up, though, over the higher elevations here uh, with those lower heights in place here tomorrow. Uh, we are going to see a front starting to sweep down through eastern parts of Canada. That will bring us a little bit of a better chance for weather in western New York. Uh, but relatively quiet until we get into late Tuesday night, Wednesday morning over upstate New York and then into northern New England. A few showers and possible storms here Wednesday afternoon. Maybe some locally strong wind here, maybe a bit of hail as well with colder air aloft moving through, uh, but not looking at a tornado outbreak at this point. Well, I really appreciate y'all's time today. If you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, I very much would appreciate that. I thank you for your time today. I give all the glory to God who allows me to do what I do every day. He has called me to be a meteorologist. I know it may seem like uh, it's not possible to have somebody who is a scientist and also a believer in God, but that is what I believe. That's why I'm called here. I am a person of faith. And I wanted to share a passage from Hebrews 11. This is actually the King James Version. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And what this basically says is, um, you know, the, the idea of Christianity is all based on faith in things that are hoped for and evidence of things not seen. However, God uh, continues every day in my life, and I know in a lot of your lives as well, to bless us with things that we maybe are hoping for, we're praying for, but we're not seeing in the future. Um, but we all have faith, whether or not you want to call it faith. Um, you know, if you go to work tomorrow, you expect you expect to get paid eventually. You, you do the works every day. You do the work every day because uh, faith, faith without works is dead. So you're working every day expecting that paycheck, but you haven't seen it yet. Eventually you will see it, but you haven't seen it yet. You're going on belief that you're not going to get laid off or lose your job or your company is going to go under. Um, you, you get in your car every day to drive to work, uh, going on faith that the car is going to work, that the gas that you put into it is going to operate the vehicle and that you're safely going to get there. Uh, we start families. We, uh, we have belief that we're going to raise our kids so that they can be, um, they can be, you know, basically a, not a carbon copy of us, but that we can help them grow into adults and mature adults. We have faith that that will happen. Um, you have faith that one day um, you're, you're going to will what, whatever your wealth is onto your family. Um, you're going to create a legacy for them. That's faith. So why not have faith in God? Uh, why not believe the holy word that God created the earth here less than 10,000 years ago? Um, he numbered every hair on your head. He created everything good in the world, yet the enemy wants us to not believe that. The enemy wants us to believe that we've somehow evolved. The enemy wants us to believe that, that things were created with a random Big Bang event, you know, four or five, whatever it is, billion years ago. Is the evidence there for that to happen? I think you can spin it however you'd like to if you're in science. However, I truly believe that the Lord created us. He wanted us to do good, and he wanted us to believe in his son, Jesus Christ, who wipes all of our debt away. 
And that is the good news that I'm here to share with you. And I'm going to talk more about that here this week later on. Um, I'm not going to be able to get a video in tomorrow or Wednesday. I'm going to be traveling again. Uh, but just know that we're all doing, we're all working hard. We're all believing that what we're doing is making a difference. But some of us believe a little bit more in that Jesus Christ is there for us to have eternal life. And I want to pray for you if that is something that you're struggling with. Or if you, you, you totally believe that, but you're still struggling, I want to pray for you as well. I'm happy to pray for you, and I really appreciate your time today. I hope you have a blessed day, and um, if you're planning for this weekend and you're upset about the rain, um, just plan on some fun inside things to do with your family, and remember the reason for this season, and that is um, those who served and have passed on, many of which are with our Lord and, uh, and Savior Jesus Christ now, who, uh, who, who served their country with lots of dignity, and I thank you for those of you um, who have family members who have done that and have passed on. And I want to remember them. Thank you so much for your time today. Hope you have a wonderful day and talk to you again soon. Take care.